It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to the Sunday Night Live edition of the Mike Prince Show here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our scheduled guest for tonight will be head football coach of the Waller Bulldogs, Gene Johnson. And we'll keep it in Waller County on tonight and hear from the head football coach of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers, none other than Eric Dooley. Got a lot of football to talk about. The World Series shaping up to be something special. We'll get you recapped on some high school scores and a whole lot more. So with all that being said, put on your seatbelt. Get ready for the fastest hour in radio. The Mike Prince Show Sunday Night Edition. And without any further delay, we will jump right into tonight's episode. Rough, rough time for Waller County, Texas, in the world of high school football. I mean, extremely rough. Waller Bulldogs had a bye, so they were pretty much safe, but the Royal Falcons faced off against the Belleville Brahmas. They came up short 67-0. Hempstead faced off against the Columbus Cardinals. They fell victim 51-26. Rose Hill was able to win. They held off the Brazos Christian Eagles and scored 31-21. But there was a score that shook heads and had heads scratching throughout our little area of coverage. And it happens to be the next opponent for the Walla Bulldogs, the Magnolia West Mustangs. Now, Magnolia West and Magnolia have been in some grooves. They've been taking care of business. They pulled off some big wins over Lufkin. Lufkin, a powerhouse of recent, some say not the same powerhouse that they used to be, but quite respectable squad. But Magnolia West beat the Caney Creek Panthers by the score of 97 to 0. A lot of points, a lot of points. And it one, makes one wonder. Are Mag West that powerful and potent? Or is Caney Creek that much of a struggling program? Or could it just be a combination of both? We will break things down a little bit further in that. And, of course, the NFL is rolling along. Congratulations to my beloved Steelers. Cowboys and the Texans are struggling majorly. And just a head scratcher. The Cowboys is really a mess. And it's really, and it's not dog piling on them. It's just, it's just a mess at this point. And it's been a mess for a while. And you, you point the fingers. You said it was the coaching. You get rid of the coaching. Now they saying, start getting rid of some of your key players. And it's just it's a bad situation. I'm not a Cowboy fan by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not good to watch this program just tank. And speaking of tanking, Atlanta just create ways to just give away games, don't they? Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Not real sure about how all of that is going on. And then we still have um, the hot news about the Western Athletic Conference digging deep in the heart of Texas, offering invitations to Stephen F. Austin, Abilene Christian, Sam Houston, and Lamar to extend their conference. And if by chance, if by chance that comes to fruition, I'm serving notice right now that the Southland Conference need not even bother come knocking at the door of Prairie View a &M University trying to dangle a carrot, say, hey, guys, consider coming over to be a part of us. Absolutely out of the question. We got a lot 
to break down tonight. But before I do that, the World Series game five tonight. And a lot of people were in um, an uproar about how the game ended last night. And there are a lot of things that were going on. How could the catcher miss the ball? This, that, and the other. And, and if you've never been in that situation, it's easier said than done. But I can somewhat try to give you a glimpse of what perhaps may have happened with Will Smith, the catcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yes, the ball was bobbled by the center fielder, Taylor. And they make the throw, the cutoffs, and the relays. But when you got a guy coming down third baseline, and not just a small guy, but a large human being running 20, 25 miles an hour, and you're the catcher, and you look to your left to gauge the distance of the catcher, I mean, of the runner, you then go back to focus on tracking the ball. And with the calculations in your head, you're anticipating the impact. So the natural thing is to try to defend yourself best as possible. Make the sweep tag attempt while avoiding the collision and the one that got away from them. That's a safe assumption to come up with. But nonetheless, they'll play game five tonight. And I was on record. I thought that the Rays and was pulling for the Rays because they're the underdog. But I really think that the Rays take care of business tonight. It's over. It really is. I got to take a break right now so we can hear from our guest on tonight. Coach Gene Johnson will be our first guest. And, of course, Eric Dooley will be our next scheduled guest. So what I'm going to do is get ready to take a break. And when we come back, we'll shift on over to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline and get our first guest. You listen to the Mike Prince Show live Sunday night edition. We will be right back. At 17 cents a day, you can make a huge impact on our local and regional high school and college student athletic coverage. We provide local talk shows, live game coverage, and much, much more. But we need your support to continue to move forward. Visit our website today at obnradio.com. Click on the PayPal button, which is safe and secure, and become a listening partner today. Will you become part of the Open Mic Broadcast Network team? Visit that website at obnradio.com and become a listening partner today. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the voice of student athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union has 13 different locations to better serve you. Locations in Rosenberg, Missouri City, Katy, College Station, Bryan, Brenham, and Waller, Texas. For more information, you can contact them on their toll-free number, 855-391-2149. Or you can send an email to information at bvscu.org. Be the one with courage to fight child abuse. All Texans must find the courage to fight child abuse. Learn the signs and symptoms and report suspected abuse to appropriate authorities. Learn and know these warning signs. A child who undergoes changes in behavior, appetite, or routine. Watch for unexplained injuries, a change in academic performance, or loss of interest by a child in regular activities. Trust your instincts. If you suspect something, do something. If you believe a child is in an abusive situation, please call the Texas Abuse Hotline at 1-800-252-5400. Be the one with courage. To find your local children's advocacy center, visit onewithcourage.org. On behalf of children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Education, your health care, your community, your future. Your vote counts for many things. Take control, get registered, get educated, get out and vote. Learn more at www.vote411.org. This is a public service announcement from Open Mic Broadcast Network.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mike Prince Show Live. As we get ready to go into our first segment, we're going to stay in Waller County here to Waller High School. Had a bye week this week, but man, they had some tape on a tall order we'll talk about in just a moment. We present to some and introduce to others on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline, Coach Gene Johnson. Coach, how you doing this evening, sir? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you for making yourself available. Um, you had a bye week this week, but, man, did you have some tape to look at uh, on this morning and probably throughout the rest of the week. Um, no secret that Magnolia West already knew they had a pretty strong program but they were able to pitch a shutout and score 97 points. Were you able to look at some of that film yet? We were. We we took a quick look at it, and, uh, you know, I guess would it be fair to say they're pretty explosive on offense? Uh, you know, I think that's the understatement <laughs> of the year. But you know what, Coach, I can't help but ask, and, and you, we never, ever take the position of dogpiling on any student athlete, especially high school kids. Um, but it it's – speaks of big volume of contrast and programming that of Caney Creek and Magnolia. Are Magnolia West that good, or is it more of a challenge from the Caney Creek side of things? Well, I think there's a, a compilation of both. Uh, you know, you, you look at some of the challenges that Caney Creek went into it with. They had a freshman playing quarterback, and of course he got his first start against us the week before, and you're just seeing some unique things, I think, with COVID. I think I mentioned to you that we started uh, two freshmen on the offensive line ourselves because of some COVID issues that were going on last week. So so when you combine that with uh, the fact that they're in their first year with this head coach and learning a new system, um, they certainly had some hurdles to overcome. But, but I think you would be making a huge mistake if you didn't. And on the other side is the total opposite spectrum. Um, you know, you've got a coach that's been in there for quite some time at Magnolia West. And so he has his program, uh, ingrained in those kids and they, they're all on the same page and he has some experienced players, he played a lot of young guys last year. So fair to say that both of those things hold true. I think probably though it's, uh, sometimes it's hard to score touchdowns on air. We talk about, you know, so score 97, they, that's no fluke. Right, right. Well, the- here's the thing. You still have a somewhat of a young team yourself. Now they're feeling good. You got two big wins. Does this send a hidden message to them or what is the message that you give to them when you got an opponent who's they they've scored on everyone just about at wheel right now. What's the message that you give for your team in preparations for this week? Well, I, you know, the the honest truth is we tried to deliver a message that we don't even talk about our opponent and who we're playing. We try to talk about playing a nameless, faceless opponent. And um, I screwed up a couple of times the week of Caney Creek and, <laughs> and mentioned that we were playing Caney Creek and the kids set me straight and said, no, coach, this is this is opponent four. Remember, coach? And uh, so, you know, we, we know that they present some challenges, but I think you run into big problems when you focus on your opponent. And I think, you know, what we've got to focus on is our execution. And that's because that's all we're in control over. We're not in control over how explosive or how well our opponent executes or what plays they run, but we are in control of how we play and how we execute and whether we play with confidence. And, uh, you know, so that's, there's probably some of that, you know, gamesmanship there when, uh, teams are scoring a lot of points. They, they're they trying to build up the confidence in their kids and, and trying to deflate the confidence in others. And so I think it'll be really important for us to be comfortable with who we are and just bear down and focus on how we play and what we're in control of. Absolutely. You know, and when you're thinking about that, it reminds me of some conversations that we had off the air on how situations are today. I've never been on the end of a route like that, but I've been where – I've gotten beat pretty bad, and back when I played, you know, I'll just put myself in that position, there were lessons to be learned from it. But today it would appear, and I'm not throwing any words in someone's face, but just the way things have been moving of late, that it seemed that some parents or onlookers would even be concerned and saying that they should have had a mercy rule involved 
with this 97. We know that when it's a game like that, that's that lopsided, that they go and say, hey, we're going to run the clock. It's going to be a continuous run. But you can only do so much, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know there's so many different philosophies of, of how to handle lopsided scores and when things get out of hand. And, and it is certainly my understanding that they ran the clock and, um, you know, and that they they tried to do some things to to keep it, you know, as close as maybe what they could. But, uh, you know, every, everyone has their own approach to that. And uh, we talk about it as a staff in our staff rooms if we ever get in position to – you know, to try to manage scores that we want to try to do so. I think it's the right thing to do. And, um, it's, you know, but it's a, it's a tough call. A lot it, of people it's, it's an extreme have different call. approaches on it. Yes, yeah, sir. It's an extreme. You got kids that sometimes you're going two, three, in some cases even four deep. And all they want to do is show that they're worthy of being on the team and on the field. They get in to get their reps in. And all they're doing, they're on compete mode. You know, all they say, yeah. hey, hey, what, what do you mean? take a knee and dive down and stop before I score. That's what we practice for, right, Coach? So it's it's a catch-22, and I do get it, but I'm not going to harp on that much longer. Health-wise, how are the Bulldogs looking for this week against the Mustangs? Well, we're, you know, we've got a few guys out for not, maybe not direct COVID issue, but COVID contact issue. And so I think we, we said we were missing six starters on offense last game, and we're hopeful uh, to get some of those guys back, but questionable. If, if I'm honest with you, we lost one that um, that we had that we had for Caney Creek. We lost another one since then, and so uh, I think from a health standpoint, we're good. From a COVID standpoint, and and some of this contact stuff, uh, we're we're very questionable. I guess we're day by day. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely something uh, to scratch your head at. But it was almost like we kind of knew this walking into the situation with our eyes wide open. There was no risk, no reward. Um, are you uh, in any regretful state that you've continued on with the season? Or are you okay with the way things are developing thus far? Oh, no. I, I think without a doubt, I'm I'm so pleased that we made the decision to let the kids play. And, and uh, you know, I think at the at the end of the day, uh, we're foolish to say that we can absolve all risk from the sport, but you know, before COVID ever even came along, there's we've had things with uh, kids with heart issues that we've we've lost, and uh, you know, and just different types of injuries that have been sometimes career-ending injuries. There, there is a risk in our sport and in life, and uh, I just felt like that we needed to kind of plod forward and let the parents and the kiddos make those decisions of. You know whether the the risk was too high for what they considered the reward to be, and um, so I, I'm pleased with with where we're at now, and we're just we're working to be uh, very uh, I guess sensitive is a fair word, just sensitive to, to everyone's viewpoint on it, and um, you know, and then just keep keep plodding forward. Yes, sir. We're speaking right now with Coach Gene Johnson of the Wall of Bulldogs on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Um, big week ahead, taking on the Magnolia Mustangs. And, Coach, I know you had a bye week to try to add a couple of more wrinkles and tighten up screws on this, that, and the other. And it should be an exciting game. Uh, be the first game back home since your road trip against Caney Creek. And with that being said, we're going to keep our eyes, toes, and legs crossed that no more sickness come up upon you guys, and none, none on the coaching staff as well, because be harder on, on watch this, Coach, on you older fellas than those younger <laughs> fellas. You know, I didn't put myself yeah, in that category. You, you, you must be talking about the other coaches on my staff, because I am, I, you know, I consider myself the young, one of the young guys. <laughs> I do understand, Coach. Well, look, I do know that you're extremely busy, and we thank you for making yourself available uh, for this evening. But if you could give us some closing thoughts and comments as we get ready to close this segment out, sir. Oh, I guess the biggest closing thought I have is, you know, we need all those Waller High graduates and our community members to come out. It's homecoming this week, and I know we have some limitations on attendance in the stadium, but uh, if you're able to make it out, you know, I think we've got some awesome kids, as I've said before, and they're they're certainly worthy of supporting. And, and then it's also just when you have homecoming, it's great for, you know, for, for uh, alumni to come back and see those classmates and 
kind of talk, tell some tall fishing stories, I guess, about their times. When they <laughs> How were, awesome they, they were when they played, right? Everybody was undefeated oh, when they yeah. played. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, oh, you know, man. I'm hoping that we can, we can have a great environment for the kids. There's so many things they're missing out on, like homecoming dances. And so hopefully we'll have a, a great festive night there for homecoming for them to play the, and get after the Mustangs. Yes, sir. The Mustang kickoff will be Friday 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, Coach, I'm going to have to make sure we got our depth charts together, man, with the changing and rearrangements for the broadcast on Friday night. But we do thank you for joining in with us, man, and you stay safe. And, Lord, say the same in the creek don't rise. We talk to you sometime midweek, sir. Sounds great. I, but one last thing. We'll have those depth charts ready at 6.59 Friday. Oh, that sounds like a plan, man. That's the way it always works out, right? <laughs> right, right, now, right now with COVID, we're not planning anything until about, about right before that kickoff. <laughs> fair enough, Sarah. Fair enough. You have a wonderful evening. That was Coach Gene Johnson of the Wall of Bulldogs and the elusive depth chart. I don't know why coaches do that. They just do that. They don't give you depth charts, don't want to give out rosters. It's not like we're going to do anything espionage or is that even such a word? We're not spies, but I do understand. Hey, we're going to take us a break, and we'll be right back with more of the Mike Prince Show Live right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Keep it right where you got it. Don't you go nowhere. Are you looking to expand your business or services? Let the Open Mic Broadcast Network help lead the way. With our customized campaigns, we are definitely able to reach your target audience. For more information, dial 832-213-8824. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community through faith and athletics. The voice of student athletics. Hello, this is Alonzo Hardy Jr., the president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999 at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who played in the conference in any sport, as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Profit Wacken Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. And welcome back to the Mike Prince Show Live Sunday Night Edition. Don't forget that you can follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is Open Mike Broadcast Network. We have a 24-hour dial-in message line. It's 713-570-6736. And we made a little announcement throughout the course of the week that we would try to get a chance to squeeze in a call or two. And I think I'm going to try to open it up right now before we get back on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline to speak with Coach Eric Dooley. If you have a question that you'd like to try to get in real quickly, uh, you can reach out to us at 936-333-5256. 936-333-5256. As we get ready to move on just a little bit further, talking with Coach Gene Johnson and the Bulldogs getting ready for homecoming festivities against the Magnolia West Mustangs. Scored 97 points. Bulldogs coming off a 56-point production themselves. So we'll find out just where the rubber is going to meet the road on this team. But it's going to be a tall order for the Bulldogs because Magnolia is a well 
fine-tuned machine, and they're clicking on all cylinders, not taking any prisoners. They're just seeking and destroying everyone that they've been across. So it'll be very interesting to see how these teams pan out on Friday night. And with all that being said, we go back to the NFL and how it's such a struggle for the Falcons. It's a struggle for the Cowboys. It's a struggle for the Texans right now. Of those three teams, which one do you believe has a brighter future? We know that right now the Cowboys quarterbacking situation is in uh, is like a pick 'em right now. Prescott, we've all seen that horrific accident. Now there's no telling how long Dalton's going to be out. From my understanding, he has to deal with concussion protocol. And dealing with that, it's no guarantee that he'll be ready to go next week. On the Texans' hand, you have Watson, who's one of the more prolific quarterbacks, uh, but it seems like the Texans are getting in their own way. The defense is what's suspect for the Texans right now. And then Atlanta, uh, where do you begin or where do you stop? It's just... It's just bad. It's absolutely bad. And it doesn't appear that it's getting any better, man. It really doesn't appear. And I know there are a lot of Cowboy fans, some proud Cowboy fans. And here's the problem that I have with Cowboy fans. When they win, if they remotely win, they come out the woodwork like cockroaches. They're everywhere. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? But then when they're struggling, and all teams will struggle. I don't care who you root for, your team will struggle sooner or later, some more than others. But then they make up a whole bunch of excuses, and they talk about everyone else's fault, why not just accept it for what it is. If your team is not that good at this point, just acknowledge it for what it is and say, you know what, it's just not that good. It goes back to what I was talking about on the other day with the addition of Bethune Cookman and FAMU, everyone has in my vantage point, and maybe I have a sensitive uh, nerve on this, but it seems like all you hear, of course, is Bethune, FAM, Jackson, Southern, Gramlin, Alcorn. No one else of any record. Man, it's going to be some great rivals with fam, it's going to be some great rivals with Southern. It's going to be some great rivals with Bethune and with fam. It's going to be some great rivals with Jackson and fam. You know, you hear all this, but I do want to give a little side note, just a little side note, you know, since this is a PV based uh, program to some degree that in 1958, I know that's a long time ago. As a matter of fact, um, uh, a few years before I even knew I was kicking around on planet Earth. But there was a national black championship being played and the Prairie View A&M University Panthers were victorious over, guess who? The Fam U Rattlers. 1958 was the year. That's the last time they played. And it's going to be interesting to see our next scheduled guest will be Coach Eric Dooley. We're going to try to get him lined up just to see if he's seeing what I've been seeing. You know, no one is talking about us. And, and to a degree, to a degree, have we done enough for others to make mention? We'll find, about, find out about all that here real, real soon. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. And we are live here from the studios of the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We're going to take us a break. And when we return, we'll hear more from Coach Eric Dooley. Keep it where you got it. We'll be right back.
one voice. It can get the point across, but it only carries so far. Add a voice, it's richer, louder, but that has limits too. Add a third voice, it's even more powerful. Add another, and another, and many, many more, and we are stronger than ever. That's the power of a community coalition. They help community groups, faith groups, civic organizations, PTAs, employers, and many others in your community organize their resources and focus them where they're needed most, like fighting to keep kids away from drugs. Ask a group that you belong to if they should belong to a community coalition. It's easy to get involved. Visit helpyourcommunity.org and they'll tell you exactly how your group can help. That's helpyourcommunity.org because you get more when we get together. Brought to you by the Office of National Drug Control Policy and the Ad Council. Broadcasters come into our lives on radio and TV, bringing us information and entertainment. Broadcasters are there for us, but who is there for them when they fall on hard times? The Broadcasters Foundation of America provides financial assistance to broadcasters in acute need due to a critical illness, accident, or other serious misfortune. If you know of a broadcaster on the air or behind the scenes who may need our help, please share our message. Visit broadcastersfoundation.org. If you could do one thing to make an impact on the things that matter to your family, your community, and your country, wouldn't you do it? That's what voting is all about, an easy way to make a difference. Register, learn about the issues and candidates, and vote this November. Your vote helps shape the future of America. Visit www.vote411.org to get started. This is a public service announcement from Open Mic Broadcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mike Prince Show Live Edition, Sunday night edition here. And we're going back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. We have a young man who is no stranger to the show. He leads the charge for the Prairie View AM University Panthers football program, none other than Coach Eric Dooley. Coach, how you doing? And welcome to the show, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing I'm doing quite well. Um uh, I did ask you during the break if you were a Cowboys fan, but you you didn't. You I forgot you're a Saints fan. You're from New Orleans, so uh, you you feeling good about your Saints, man? I, I'm feeling uh, a little hesitant, but we, we, as long as we keep getting wins, I'm, I'm okay. We're not winning uh, big, but we winning. Oh well, hey, that's all that counts, right? If I win by one or 101, I just want the W. Still go down as a W, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, look, Coach, I went on somewhat of a rant. And before I go on, uh, finish what my rant was, um, you and the family are safe, man? Everybody's doing well, absolutely. Okay, very good, very good. Now, the rant that I went on about this, this, uh, this, this segment, this last segment, you probably – Cannot and won't say anything, but I'm a talk show host and I'm not supposed to talk about stuff, right? Sometimes they love me for it. Sometimes they hate me for it. But just from my vantage point, from my vantage point, since the addition of Bethune and Fam, that's all I've been hearing. Bethune Cookman, Fam, you, Southern University, Grambling University, all corn. And then uh, you're going to stop with Jackson. Have is it me or Prairie View? I'm going to say we have been somewhat of the forgotten child. Uh, you know what? I, I, I say that with a, with a, with a lot of uh, confidence. It's going to be my job to make them recognize who we are. Okay. Now, I, I'm, all, I'm all for Because I'm like, now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. And in all fairness, I'll be like, okay, well, have we done enough to be considered that? And and I still say that's a work in progress. But one thing that I want to bring to the light, to the light, because in all fairness to you, coach, you've had to you've had to juggle some hats. And I don't think a lot of people understand some of the hats you've had to juggle. And I know you're not going to say much. And and my job is to bring to light so people can start seeing a little bit different than what they would normally look at from the surface of things. Okay. But this is okay. technically your fourth athletic director in three years. <laughs> yes. That, yes I, I, I don't care. That's not an excuse. That's a reality. And I don't care who you are. 
superhuman or subhuman, that's a tall order to adjust to and try to work with. And I know. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's a tough situation. And, you know, I the way I, I look at it, uh, I make adjustments. You know, I, I look at it as a sudden change. Uh-huh. It's, been some, it's been quite a few sudden changes. So now I, I make the adjustment and I move forward. I, I, I had a vision. Uh, when I first came here, and, and that vision is not going to change. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, that that's to make Prairie View uh, champions. So that that vision is still uh, within our path, and um, I, I you know I do welcome uh, everyone that come aboard, and and now they get a chance to, um, in, in my opinion, to to be a part of something that I think is going to be special, that I know is going to be special. But you know I, I don't I don't make excuses. I just keep moving. Well, we can't we can't make excuses because there is a, a a terminology about excuses. But this is a family show, and I won't uh, go down that road. But I'm pretty sure you've been around. You heard they said that, that everyone has one, so we won't <laughs> we won't talk about Absolutely. that right now. But let's talk about this up and coming spring season. You, you've got the portal open of uh, the February start. Um, you've had. Uh, the guys released, but then there was a little minor setback. Where are things now as far as getting on course and getting ready for the spring kickoff for Panthers 2021 version? Well, yeah, we, you know, we're moving right along. We're, we're excited. Uh, uh, the main thing that, that I'm trying to make sure I institute uh, is, is the academic side of it. Uh, that's the part that I'm really staying on part with, making sure that the guys are uh, going to study hall, making sure that the guys are doing the assignments because we, we've been hit with a, a – a pandemic, something that no one ever experienced. So I know it's a little different. And, you know, you can say where they, they, are, they are students, but, you know, these are students that never had to go through this. They never had to uh, go through uh, uh, Zoom uh, classes. Uh, never had to go to not being face-to-face. And, you know, sometimes even when it's face-to-face, it's, it's a tough task. So we're making sure that the uh, the mindset is there, that the, the well-being is there, and, and then their families too, because their families are going through a lot of different situations because you got to look at the uh, at the fact that, you know, uh, I, I hear people say it all the time, you know, you sit to the table and now they have an empty seat at that table mm-hmm. because of this pandemic. So it, it's a tough situation. So I'm making sure that as far as the psychic part that I'm, I'm there with the student athletes. And I, I think that the guys have been doing a great job and, and they'll carry on from there. But we, we moving along, getting prepared for, um, uh, of course, uh, February 27th. Uh, we're in the stages of uh, strength and conditioning right now. So I, I think everything is moving along as, as good as it could be. Okay, and with that being said, I know it's hard to to have what your depth chart would be looking like right about now because you hadn't had the spring workouts and everything has been delayed. Uh, but you got guys that you kind of have in your in your visionary depth chart or where you're projecting guys to be until proven otherwise. How are you looking when you look at your depth uh, positions, at your your key skill positions, and so on and so forth? I think I feel pretty good. The good thing about it, you know, uh, we were able to get at least seven practices in. And out of those 15, we got seven in, which is almost half. So that was a good deal for us to go back and assess and, and get a, a assessment as to where those guys are and how they fit in. Of course, it's still going to be competition once once we hit the field once again. But uh, we, we have a good idea because we have a lot of guys that, that are returning. So we know where those guys are. But then we evaluated some guys that we brought onto our program that we feel going to uh, be able to help us uh, tremendously. When you talk about a Shelvin Hudson that came from a, a junior college, when you talk about a Kevin Victorian, another experienced guy that came from uh, junior college, when you talk about a Dante Carter, another guy that came from junior college. Notice that I say all these guys, all three of these guys here are defensive uh, linemen. So uh, I feel the assessment that we made, the evaluation that uh, the coaching staff went out and uh, brought these guys in, uh, we, we feel – well, we feel like we're in a good place and we, we can make some assessments. And, and um, once we get a chance to get on that field, uh, I think everything will take care of itself. OK, we're talking right now with Coach Eric Dooley of the Prairie View a University Panthers on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. And you talk about the additions of the D-line. You also uh, brought in. Uh, some more help on that defensive side of thing in your coaching staff. And uh, we got a chance to talk with those guys. It seems so long ago now, coach, before this pandemic really started taking over. But as a refresher course, remind the listeners right now of some of the guys that you've added from the coaching standpoint to help get the Panthers in the right direction. 
Yeah, I brought this young man who I had the uh, the uh, honor to coach uh, way back when. It's been a long time, way back in the uh, uh, mid uh, uh, '90s. Uh, had a chance to coach him as a player. He moved on and uh, played in uh, at the high level at the NFL and, and did some great things. And had the opportunity to come back and work with him as a graduate assistant. But then um, moving to another uh, conference school, he came as my offensive line coach, and we, we did some great things together and have a, a great uh, relationship. Uh, and that's Damian Nivens. I brought him in as my offensive line coach with a lot of wealth experience. I've been coaching in the SWAC for over uh, 10, 12 years now. So uh, that, that's been a great addition. And then uh, another guy that I had opportunity to coach with, uh, Van Singletary, uh, had opportunity to coach with him a year. And he, he has a lot of experience uh, coached on the NFL, uh, coached at some FBS schools, and uh, he's going to bring a wealth of knowledge as well. So you know, those guys, are, it's always been a family for me. It's, it's guys that I'm very familiar with, guys that uh, that family knows one another. So uh, it, it's a good relationship, and those guys are going to help us uh, as we move forward within this year here. Okay, and when you talk about the moving forward, it's obvious that the dynamics of the non-conference games are going to forever be changed. Are there any particular uh, institutions that you have reached out to, Coach, that would make sense for you regionally uh, to play and that could even help in the kitty box as far as financial gain? Um, in particular, I'm thinking in the state of Texas, um, are, are you developing any of those uh, new found relationships? I think with the uh, with uh, with the coming of uh, our new outlet, director dr reed he he has some relationship with some uh previous uh athletic directors that's within this state so i know he has been reaching out and he and i communicate as well when you know something come up nothing right now to sit in stone right now uh so we're not sure as as to how but you know with the addition of um uh platoon cookman and, and florida and m that that's gonna uh take up another game too so we won't have as many uh preseason games i should say uh nine conference games uh lack of better word, uh, to play. So just a matter of just connecting with some of the uh, schools in the state. And I do make, I know next year, uh, regardless of what, we do play Texas A&M. Uh, that's on the schedule as well. Yes, sir. I knew I knew that one. That one was set uh, a couple of years ago. And I'm just, and just me, I'm, I'm, I'm a broadcaster, journalist, fan, support, and all that. I, I would love for us to take on the likes of a UTEP, uh, USTA, uh, uh, um, and even uh, who am I forgetting? Another, I don't, uh, I, 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 you're gonna think I'm crazy, coach, but I would like to see how we do against a Texas Tech or a Kansas from the Big 12. Absolutely, you know, uh, <laughs> going into my third year with some of the guys that I've been fortunate enough to bring in, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm never gonna turn down anything, I feel uh, good about what we have here and, and, and the guys that we bring in to join uh this uh this Panther team. So uh, I feel good and we we you know once the guys the games get scheduled we're gonna line up and we're gonna play it. Uh we feel good about ourselves because uh regardless of who we play, they're gonna do the same thing we do, put their pants on one leg at a time. Yes sir. Well I'm so glad that you just used that terminology, coach, put your pants on one leg at a time. There is no secret that there's been a big splash higher in the conference and it's been the buzz throughout and from all the coaches that I've spoken with they welcome the challenge and ready to give out their swag credit hours if that makes any sense say uh welcome to the swag and you're gonna have to earn your way through uh from beginning to end when you look at the addition of the coaching staff uh at Jackson State does that move your needle one way or the other uh you know and and and, and honestly it doesn't. I've been a part of this conference for almost 30 years, and uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen the highs and the lows, and, and I know the, the challenges that they have here, and, and I'll, I'll be the first to say it. It always have been some great coaches in this conference. And no doubt. Some great coaches. In no conference. doubt. So, uh, and, and then when you talk about the talent, uh, th that's why my, my passion is so deep for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. I mean, yeah, opportunities always come about. But this is where I belong. This is where the Lord wants me to be. Uh, so uh, there's no other place for me. But as uh, far as challenges, I, I, I take on challenges every year. Regardless of who it is, I, I don't care if they've been coaching for 30 years or zero years. Once you come on, I know it's a challenge for 60 minutes. Yes, sir. And, and it's going to be a challenge whether you choose to be a part of it or not. 
because I'm I'm gonna use this broken English just to make it sound better, coach. Because we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes, sir. Like we're, it. we're not. We're talking right now with Coach Eric Dooley of the Prairie View A and M University Panthers. Panthers getting ready for spring football now, Coach. I had um, a wild hair idea. In the event, because we don't know what's going to happen, that's why we write our plans in pencil so you can have an eraser to change them. But do you think it would be acceptable if we had a reduced spring schedule? And when I say a reduced spring schedule, have your annual uh, uh, purple and gold game in our case and then schedule a home and home with your immediate rival, in our case, uh, Texas Southern play them at home, then we play them at home a week later, and then get ready for the fall uh, campaign. Would that seem too far-fetched, or is that something that could be considered to save on travel and still get that spirit of competition and try to raise a little money? Yeah, I, that, that's always that, that's a great idea, uh, one that hadn't crossed my mind, but, you know, uh, I, I, it sounds like a good plan. Or, so I, I wouldn't see that being far-fetched. And and the way the way you would do it with the rest of the pairings, of course, you would have Gramlin and Southern in the same likeness. You'd have Jackson and Alcorn in the same likeness, Pine Bluff and Valley in the same likeness. And that way you still get to hit someone in another color and you you get a chance to, you know, weigh everything out and still analyze because the way I'm looking at it, the NCAA is going to already grant uh, the extra year to the seniors. So why not take advantage of it, get something instead of trying to put all your eggs and get nothing out of it. And you can get two for one. You can get two for one. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Now coach, as always, you know, we, we want to let you know, and I got to let you know, I don't know if you got anything, but they've been wearing the heck out of me. I had to say heck because it is Sunday. And, okay. uh, um, I keep getting ass, and I want I want it to be clear. I said, man, when you going to have a coach on the show like you used to have your other coaches? And I want you to know, and I want the rest of the boys that are listening to know that there's an open door, and whatever we need to do to make that happen, we're going to make that happen. We're going to make that happen. You know, you know when, when you're a family member and uh, – you know, I, I grew up with uh, five brothers and two sisters. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we had some disagreements within the house. But at the end of the day, we came together because we were family. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm always here. I'm here. Uh, I don't have a, a, a problem with uh, talking. Uh, sometimes I like to talk. Sometimes I, I think I talk too much uh, if I, I listen to my wife. But I don't have a problem <laughs> with, uh, really, <laughs> with really selling uh uh, our program and with someone that want to sell our program, you know, we, we talking about spreading our, um, our, our program out abroad and, and getting our guys to be recognized and let them know who we are saying what's going on here at Prairie View, you know, so I, I have no issues with that. Of course, I just, uh, you know, most of the time you try to stay in your lane, whatever you can control, you control it. Uh, so I don't have a problem with that. Uh, let me, uh, say this here, be the first to say this here. I'll, I'll get with, uh, who I need to get with concerning that, and we'll make it happen. Okay, well that sounds that sounds fair enough because um, we're gonna we're gonna do all we can while we can to make sure that we get everybody uh, the the love that's needed. You know, and sometimes people don't understand that we all have jobs to do. <laughs> we, yes. we we all have jobs to do, but I guarantee you, um, we are allies more than than what they call frenemies and i just want i want the record to be known and the record to be set straight that there's going to always be an open door and with that i want to thank you for being a part with us on tonight and uh want to give you an opportunity to have some closing thoughts and comments as we get ready to shut this segment part down sir hey, yeah I, I like to start off by saying it here you know this this is a trying time uh we we all in something that we never can even uh imagine but, you know, everyone, I think they need to get together and, and, and just continue to pray and pray that, you know, the Lord keep us safe, keep the student athletes safe and keep our people that, that are in charge safe uh, to be able to make the right decisions that are going to protect the families 
you know, because uh, I think you can always replace a football game, but you can never replace a life. So, you know, with that being said, I just continue to keep us in prayer as we move forward, getting closer to this season. And uh, uh, I, I, I know that we have put together, me and my coaching staff, have put together a team that uh, everyone uh, uh, enjoy coming to see. So uh, the very first opportunity you'll get would be February 27th. We'd like to see you guys out there in Dallas. Uh, supporting us and uh, representing uh, Fred Uranium University. Yes, sir. And with that Dallas mention, they're still going to run it as the Cotton Bowl uh, State Fair Classic. And um, who's the home team this year, Coach? Gremlin is. Gremlin is the home team. Okay, so it doesn't matter. We got to keep building that house up in Texas to make sure that they know it's actually the Panthers' home time every time they come to Texas. How about that? Absolutely. We got a bunch of, uh, we got a lot of Dallas guys, Fort Worth guys that's on the team, so I'm pretty sure they'll be out as well. And uh, we just look forward to it. It should be an exciting game to, to start off the, uh, uh, I guess, this, this football season, which would be 21. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get your popcorn ready because game time is right around the corner. He is Coach Eric Dooley with the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. we got to take us a break, but want to thank you guys for listening in on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. And we'll be right back with more of tonight's live episode of the Mike Prince Show. Keep it right where you got it, and we'll be right back. This broadcast has been made possible by the support of the Prairie View Athletic Club. The Prairie View Athletic Club is a proud supporter of Prairie View A&M University Athletics. For more information on becoming a member of the Prairie View Athletic Club, send your email to pvathletic.club at gmail.com. That email address again is pvathletic.club at gmail.com. Prairie View Athletic Club a proud supporter of Prairie View A&M University Athletics. Are you one of the many Americans that deal with the effects of diabetes? Diva Skin Conditioner could be the remedy that you need. Diva Skin Conditioner is a formulation that was designed with you in mind. Diva Skin Conditioner comes with a money-back guarantee. That's how confident they are in their product. For more information, visit DivaFeet. Dot com. That's D-I-V-A-H, feet.com. Or you can speak with a representative by dialing 903-270-0026. Let's face it, from time to time, we'll have a need for an attorney, whether it's the case of a DUI, DWI, or any other circumstances that would find you on the other side of the law. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, located at 1047 Austin Street, is the one to call. Attorney Lee Van Richardson and his staff are equipped to help you get through your legal battles. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, 979-826-8008 in Hempstead, Texas. Half sports will trap. The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving student athletes from Little League, high school, and collegiate coverage right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. From coast to coast, 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 coast. from from dust till dawn, you can catch all student athletic action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Join us for a daily episode of the Mike Prince Show right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I told you at the beginning of the show, this is the fastest hour in radio. We're in our final segment right now. We want to thank our guests that have joined us on tonight. Gene Johnson of the Walla Bulldogs and just closed up with Eric Dooley of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. Two men based in Walla County trying to grind and get some things done. And sometimes 
it seems like your labor goes unrecognized, but you got to keep your head on the grind and you got to keep doing what you know is right. And as the old folk used to say, what well, don't come out in the wash will always come out in the rinse. And with all that being said, we want to remind you that we come to you each and every day right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our scheduled mission and task is to have something for you by 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Of course, we come to you live here Sundays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have a whole other list of shows here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network that can help you gain insight and information on the world of HBCU sports, the MEAC, the SWAC, and much, much more. The Carlos Brown Show, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Central Standard Time on Saturdays. Miss Sonia stands for She Say, She Say Sports on Fridays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. B.J. Jones is going to be coming with the barbershop. We're still working on a time frame and getting some things lined up with that. And we have so much more. The Journey. All you have to do is visit the website and see for yourself at obmradio.com to get the latest and the greatest information. Now, of course, we've been talking about a whole bunch of things. World Series, baseball, Game five tonight, I believe the Rays, if they can pull it out tonight, that's a wrap. Because the pressure right now is all on the Dodgers. And the beauty about baseball, rather than any other sport, is that it doesn't matter what you're stacking, how much you're spending, how big you are, how fast you are, because when it's mano y mano, that pitcher on the bump, that batter in the box, that fielder fielding the ball cleanly, making the throw, then you have to catch the ball and secure the ball. There are so many moving parts that makes baseball the ideal sport that even when it doesn't seem like you have a chance, guess what? You've got a chance. And Rays proved that on last night, an epic game. I'm hoping that we see some more great baseball. I haven't looked at the scoring yet because I want to be surprised when I get done with this. But want to remind you guys that we are here because we love this conference. We love athletics. We love people. And we want to make sure that we give you an ear to hear and a voice to speak, to be heard. And always remember, you can call in on our 24-hour dial-in message line, 713 Five seven zero six seven three six. Leave your message. Leave your thoughts, questions, comments. Sometimes I can't get to all of them, but I will get to them just as soon as I can. We, as I say, we are working around the clock. Big hand, little hand service around the clock, and it goes without saying that it's a labor of love. We love you, the listeners. We love our conference. We love our universities. We love our communities in which we reside in. So hopefully you all can spread that love by becoming a listening partner by going to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, obmradio.com website, joining us and subscribing to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And you can always follow me on Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. Those little things really help a lot. We'll help promote your business if you have a business and help tell your story because that's what we're here for. We can't do it without you and we're not going to try to do it without you. And just let you know that you are definitely appreciated from top to bottom. I want to thank our guest on tonight, Gene Johnson of the Walla Bulldogs, Eric Dooley, of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. The time on the wall is telling me that that is all, and I must exit stage left. I want to thank our sponsors, Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Diva Skin Conditioner, Prairie View Athletic Club, Temple of Refuge Ministries, Helping Hands Lawn Service, And of course, we want to thank you, the listeners. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. I've got to go. But until the next time, you guys be blessed and we'll see you on 
the other side.